Okay, so on a previous discussion, we did have a chance to talk about um, the jump instruction. Um, now let's talk about uh, the branching instruction, BEQ, BNE. BEQ stands for branch if equals. BNE stands for branch if not equal. And the two things that we're testing for equality are registers. And if the values in those two registers are equal, or if they're not equal, then we're going to jump to a particular label, a particular location in code, in memory. Um, an example of that is shown here. BEQ, if registers S3 and S4 um, are equal, we're going to go to the exit. NRC to MIPS conversions. We're going to assume that we have integer variables. Um, and we've given those variables the labels F, G, H, I, and J. And um, when we're doing our conversions, I'm going to ask you to replace those variables with these registers, the S, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So you'll see oftentimes when I'm looking to do a conversion, I'll just ask you to replace the variables and assume that those values are in those particular registers. Um, the one difference uh, that you'll see a little bit later on is that there will be um, an array declaration of some sort and you can't keep an array in a variable but the a variable is a reference to the starting point right so the variable itself a when used is a reference to the starting point of the of the array so it's the first element a sub 0 it's the address of the first element um, so you'll see a little bit later that I'll, I'll indicate that um, instead of using a we're going to use um, a register to indicate the starting point of an array. So A0 oftentimes will represent the first element, the address of the first element within an array. So branch if not equal, branch if equal examples um, are what we're going to see here. So in this example we're looking to um, to test if two values are equal. And if they are equal, then we're going to do an addition. If they aren't equal, then we're going to jump and do a subtraction. Um, so let's look at the code. Um, it's probably just as easy for us to, um, to, to derive it and think about this for a second. If you're seeing this, you know that you're checking to two, to see if two registers are equal. So there's going to be a bit of intuition for most of us that would start like this. If equal, and i and j are seen here as s3 and s4, so if those two values are equal, then we know we need to go somewhere. If they are equal, we need to do an addition. So I'll call this ADDN. I'll just make up a label. Um, and if they're not equal, this and, uh, MIPS, bit of MIPS code will just continue on to the next instruction. So if they're not equal, then we're just going to do a subtraction. So we might as well just write that here. Do a subtraction, and then it's F, G, and H stored in F. And then G and H would be S1 and S2. And so this is the condition, right? We're going to do a subtraction if I and J are not equal. And then once we're done with that subtraction, there's nothing more to do. So I'm going to say if we're done with that subtraction, we want to just kind of get out of here and exit. Um, or Maybe I'll just call it L, make up a label name, L2. And L2 represents the exit. Um, so this looks like it works so far. We have S3 and S4. We're testing. 
to see if those values are equal. If they are not equal, um, right, then we're going to do a subtraction. So, which this works. If uh, if they're equal, we do a branch. If they're not equal, then we go and just do the next line. So that's how the BEQ works. But um, we still don't have this addition operation. So let's put a label in here where we do the addition operation if those two values are equal. So I'll say ADDN, there's the label. I'll do the addition operation and it's going to be S0, S1, S2 are the registers. And so we do the addition, but notice that right after the addition, we should exit. We don't want to do the addition and the subtraction. So after we do the addition, um, we don't want to do the subtraction, and so this works out okay. Um, we do the addition, and then we just kind of continue on. Um, and so, it, what's interesting about this is that there's a subtraction up top and then an addition. Notice that in our code there was a sub, an addition up top and then a subtraction. So how does this compare? This looks like the code that we see here off to the left. So that's an example of the branch if equals. Um, with the one um, kind of twist to it that the sub, uh, the subtraction is first here. Now there's more than one way. Let's see if I can erase this. There's more than one way to write this type of looping structure that, that we see here. Even though we start it with the BEQ, there's no reason we can't say, um, let's start with this alternative branch if not equals so let's go back to our loop and think about this if these two are not equal then we want to go to the else so if they are not equal I'll take a shortcut and just call s3 and s4 if they're not equal then we want to go to the else statement Right? So if it is equal, do the addition, else do the subtraction. So if they're not equal, we want to go and do the subtraction. It's the else statement. And in that else statement down here, um, we'll go ahead and do the subtraction. And it's going to be the S0, S1, S2. Right, so it's an FGH, FGH, um, and so if they're not equal, we do the subtraction, and then we get out, and this just kind of continues onward. But if they are equal, then we won't do our branch. This only branches if they're not equal. So if they are equal, then we just want to continue on and do the addition. And so, and then the addition is going to be the S0, S1, S2 for the F, G, and H. But notice that right after our addition, we turn right around and we do the subtraction anyway. So we need to fix that by making sure we don't do the subtraction and we jump over the subtraction. So that guarantees us that we will do only one or the other. So that's the B and E statement. Also notice that the addition here is first and the subtraction is second, um, and it follows the code um, as far as the linear progression, the top down, top down progression of the order of instructions. It's not required, but you'll see that when it comes to certain conditions, such as in maybe certainly in this one with the if, but also with a while loop, it sometimes will be helpful to do the opposite of what that test here 
that's this one says if equals and so we looked at a, a loop a branch that was based on a not equals condition next um, we will look at the set on less than and the set on less than immediate um, instead of testing for equality we're going to test for inequality 